Um, I'm Dr. Sonny Desi. Uh, I'm a GP and aesthetic doctor working in Rutland uh, at Vasana, our clinic. And Viv, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, uh, my name's Viv. I work at Skin Farmer Aesthetics up in the northeast in Stockton on Tees. Um, and I'm a clinical pharmacist prescriber. I just think it's useful for other practitioners to realise how important something like use of ultrasound can be, um, both for yourself as a practitioner, but also for your patients. And that's really the purpose of it. It's repetitive. It allows us to record exactly what we need and it, it allows us to do it accurately and safely for the bene benefit of the patient. Repetitive, boring and safe. I love the usual, <laughs> the usual <laughs> stuff, yeah. It's the stuff that we're used to working in the NHS, yeah. but we know it works. So today, what I would like to talk about is the business opportunities that using ultrasound in aesthetics gives us. Uh, for the past few weeks, we've spoken about how it's a brilliant for improving patient safety, um, selection criteria, vascular mapping, all those sort of things. But at the end of the day, both Viv and I, and those of you also a practitioner out there who are working, running your own businesses in a very, very competitive industry, um, we thought we would change it up slightly and talk about how ultrasound in aesthetics can help you as a business. And she really, I think, is probably the world specialist in facial ultrasound use in aesthetic practice. So um, Leonie's based in Amsterdam. She works um, as part of a group of practitioners called Cutaneous who are based in Amsterdam. Are you saying that nodules can form by retrograde movement to the SMAS? So you, you only talk about dissolving. So the question from Dr. Harris got it was, are you saying nodules can form by retrograde movement to the SMAS? <sighs> This is so nice about Flip. He always has the answer right there. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah. So what you see, the big, the big blep, the oval shaped deposit, that's hyaluronic acid. And yes. um, it's just above the orange parotid gland and it moves. Can you see that? And yes, we see filler. So the smut is a very easy layer and you can have filler migration where, where yeah, filler migration from the mid face to the temple from the temple to the jawline, from the chin to your neck. So everywhere where you have migration, it can, and you can follow it through the SMUS. So you can actually see if you make small movements. Also there, can you see that? So you see a bulb over there, but then if you look at the left side, you also see a little bit of filler going up. Um, so yes, it migrates. And sometimes you see one nodule here and one nodule there, but sometimes you do see the whole trace of filler. Yeah, okay. Good. And we're about to have research published on that. That's amazing. We're working on it, yeah. What happens when a soft tissue filler is injected inside the body? What happens inside the body? And then if an adverse event occurs, what is the reason? And we had three thoughts, three hypotheses. Thank you for letting me join. But you, you, you do, you do talk questions. a lot, actually. You know that? Because I do. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> He can get he can get a half an hour's conversation in five minutes no, compared to us two, Leonie. I mean, this is you know this is really amazing that so many people join to watch, and Leonie, this is a testament to you know you being on, and we are just trying to not raise the standards in by doing this every week. It's just to share a passion, and obviously with passion, yeah. comes trust, and with yeah. trust comes development. So, that's honestly, I know it's new. It's new technology. What I would like to say is that people who did the course and if I run into them at a congress or something else, they always say, I never realized how much I would learn from anatomy. So we think we start doing this for patient safety. It's a good reason to start. But honestly, we had a course last week and there was also a, um, a plastic surgeon and he said, I always thought cadaver anatomy was top, but he said, honestly, ultrasound is better than that. It's the anatomy and it's it's you actually getting much more education than you thought you would get. And yeah. then you have patient safety. But you have to start doing ultrasound and then you realize, ah, and it happens in your brain. So you now know if you if somebody's talking about the masseter and probably if you know, you see the yeah. masseter, you see yeah. the smas on top of it, you know, the, so it's in your head, it's completely yeah. different.